unanimous and very volatile. What is the problem? Okay, who, come on. <laughs> well, I think the problem is that we've sort of lost one of the foundations of the America, a uh, free enterprise competition in New York City anyway. Um, I see that, I believe Citibank is your largest bank in New York. Yeah, a lot of banks, chemical bank and... Um... Well, in terms of how many people it's servicing, uh, and although I'm not saying they're to blame, but I think what's happened is that they're failing to compete with each other in terms of service for people, that it's sort of a monopoly has been set up that's allowed them to not compete in terms of servicing their customers. What's happened? Come and get into this. What's happened? Because the bank was once a kind of a much admired institution. Service was first rate and quick and efficient. You had a change in your interest rates. That's one of the big things that did it, and they were slow on getting back to it. So obviously they try and, uh, they try and uh, short, short some of the things on uh, recent years with the interest rates so that they get a float, float situation. I don't understand what you're saying. Because okay. the interest rate has been high, banks have become discourteous? Inter interest rates have been high, and therefore the banks have had a problem of where the extra amount of money is that they can have between the time your check clears and the time they let you have the money becomes a more significant amount. But you're talking about one aspect of the whole thing, and I think that most people would be willing to put up with certain of the technical things that banks are doing or not doing if when you walked in, somebody smiled at you, somebody politely said hello, somebody didn't make you feel like they were doing you a favor by waiting on you. I mean, I, I'm not interested in beating my head against the wall about things that I can't really change in terms of, you know, the way the entire economy is working and stuff like that. And I'd be willing to tolerate it if when I walked into the bank, they didn't yell at me. Oh, well, Allison, I, I think that, uh, that that's not necessarily uh, uh, what the banks think. Uh, surveys that the banks have done, and I was reading in New York Magazine recently that uh, a survey was done uh, by the banks and they found that by and large people of New York City will tolerate rudeness and I think that... That's uh, true across the board, but if, you, if you're not willing to tolerate rudeness, you know, if you're willing to say you can't talk to me. Well, that what way. happens? Well, what we, we're are? using words like rude and discourteous. Well, what happens today in a bank if you go in with your paycheck and you want to cash it and you have a checking account or a savings account there? One or I the don't other. Get a paycheck. If, if, if you do it in, in your own bank and, and your paycheck is drawn on another bank, there's a waiting period of three to five business days, I think, if it's in New York City. Why? If you'd happen to get a paycheck from out of state, in my bank, which is a savings bank, it would be a 15 business day waiting period, which ends up being over three weeks. Well, is that uh, legal? Is that all right with the banking commission? As far as I know, it's legal. Now, you can even have the situation if the paycheck is drawn on the same branch from a company and deposited in there that you would have the seven days or five days minimum waiting period. And the only way you can avoid that sometimes is by going in and cashing the check on your account and then depositing the cash. That you can do. But aren't there rules that govern this, or they're not? Banks can set it up to their own rule. You I think one of the problems is we don't know what the rules are. The we've always trusted the banks. They're a service industry, and we've always had faith in them, and now this is happening, and I don't know what the rule is. You can ask right. a teller, tell her what the rule is. They'll tell you one thing. You can ask an officer what the rule is. They'll tell you another. Right. You can That's ask, true. you can call on the telephone and they'll tell you that there's another rule. And uh, you can get three or four answers for a, a particular check on clearance times. He was speaking of five or six days clearance time. Actually, I brought a check, which I had written from my money fund into well, my let's, account. Uh, can we photograph that, Mr. Yes. Director? Well, if you'll just uh, hold it to that camera. This check, oh, this, camera, this check was written from my money fund, and it was written into my uh, account at the bank, which happened to be Citibank. Uh, for how much money? This one was for $3,400. Uh, hold it up again so that we can see into it. Into my uh, uh, business account, and I had, I had transferred it in there so I could use the funds to write checks against. Uh, on the back of the check, it shows that the Citibank had received the funds one day later, but 
15 days after that, I was still receiving bounce check notices. So that 15 day clearance time on the money fund check, which only came from Did the they bank. tell you when you... This came from the Bank of New York, which was it, which is a, is a local bank. And so when we had a you did clearance. that, did they advise you there'd be a 15 day delay? Oh, not at all. Not at no. all. No, as a matter of fact, they say uh, banks such as the Bank of New York, which is a local bank, uh, they'll say that's six or seven days. But they have, they, if you ask uh, the bank, they will give you six or seven different answers. So what, whatever answer you take is not, the, is not necessarily what is going to happen because this is set up on the computer. When, when you went in to complain, what did they say? They stonewalled it. That's why we started the organization People, because uh, they absolutely refused to take... Uh, Stonewall refused to deal with it. They refused to deal with it. Because they, they couldn't deal with it because the people at my branch had just been given instructions from the higher-ups that this is the way it is. And they well, had no answer. Let me ask you about it. I mean, you know, you seem to know a lot of these rules. A certified check, I always thought, was supposed to be as good as money. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? That it meant if you got a certified check, they were taking the money out of a certain account, holding it against this check being deposited. Is that right? Let me that tell is, you what that happened. That is cor correct, yes, but it... Because I had a thing with that where I went, I opened an account, I deposited a certified check, I went back two days later to get traveler's checks on it, was told absolutely not. I mean, everyone was looking at me like I had lost my mind to make such an absurd request of these people. They were so rude. I went and I closed the account two days after I'd opened it, which really screwed which up bank? their whole paperwork. That was the chase. Chase. God, Mr. Rockefeller would be shocked. <laughs> well, I was told by Citibank, my bank, on a certified bank teller cashier's check. Certified bank teller's cashier's check. That means check. that That's the... That's five ways from Sunday. That's The a, person in the bank has verified that the cash is there <laughs> and available. Right. And... Uh, that's supposed to be the ultimate closest you can get to hard cold cash. And I was told by City that, of course, it would be three week waiting period as it is for all checks. That's their standard waiting period reply, whether it's a money order, and they don't, a bank cashier's check. Were uh, you shocked? There, Were there you is, angry? Were you frustrated? Um, well, Would you I do was, anything about it. Yes, I, I have <laughs> proceeded to join People Incorporated. And uh, I, I'll tell you, the thing that got me is when I checked around to all the banks in my neighborhood, I went to about five different banks, I found out that everybody has this three-week policy. Now, since then, I have found out that, in, as far as I know, the only bank in New York City that clears checks and does not give you this blanket three-week, which is a discriminatory discrepancy ploy, you know, blanket three-week check no matter what policy, uh, Chemical Bank, I hear, clears in three days. I didn't hit Chemical when I first got to the city, but I went to five different uh, banks and they all had this three-week uh, story and that's why I say that we've got to force them to compete. We, I sh we sure must do that. We're just going to pause a minute and come right back. I'm Phil Rizzuto for The Money Store, where we specialize in making loans to qualified homeowners for business investment, debt consolidation, home improvement, or any legitimate purpose at all. And now, under a new financing plan of the Federal National Mortgage Association, monthly payments can be lower than ever before. Want more information? Call The Money Store's new local toll-free number. Dial 1-800-221-9000. Say, here's how you start in a business. You start broke and hungry with a little broken down trailer. Then you design patent an ice cream store in an ice cream machine and a round flying saucer cracker that everybody tries to simulate. And then you make America's freshest ice cream. Gourmet premium quality ice cream made fresh. And then you people have supported us for 47 years and we are very proud. We want to thank you for your patronage. The major complaints from the people that we interviewed, and they were many, were rude and inefficient service, long, boring, fatiguing lines that you have to stay in, lack 
of access to management or the local bank manager or the assistant bank manager it just isn't available. And the check clearance thing is uh, simply capricious. Sometimes a week, sometimes five days, sometimes 17 days, sometimes 30 days. And there's no, uh, there's no reply to your frustration. I mean, there's nobody you can talk to can change I things. wrote a letter last week you on did. this very thing. I, my account now is a chemical. It's been there for about five years. And I think out of everyone in New York, I think I've had a bank account at every bank in the city. Chemical is the most reasonable, the most human. The people behind the counters seem to be reasonable human beings. I've had certain problems with them. I had a major run in with them a couple of years ago, but in general, they seem to be reasonable. And I usually bank at two different branches, one where I used to work in, the, in that building and one where I live. Last week, I went down to a new branch, which is one of their you know, biggest branches. Why? Because my new office is down near there. I, I wanted to cash a check. And I went in, and I went up the escalator, and it's the last bank in New York and maybe the last bank in America that makes you choose the line that you're going to wait in, that Russian roulette business, <laughs> where you have to decide out of the 17 <laughs> lines which one is going to move the fastest. Look for people not carrying pouches. Well, you don't know what to look for. I mean, you don't know right. the person ahead right. of you if they don't yeah. speak English. Every, they may have the simplest. Every teller position had a long line. They weren't even that long. It's just that you have no idea. You want to stop and ask everybody ahead of you, do you have a major problem or are you just cashing a check? <laughs> right. Meanwhile, as each line gets shorter by one person, everybody else is scurrying around trying to get in the right line. Right? I picked the wrong line. 20 minutes on an uncrowded day. Because I was just in the wrong line. And I had just had it after that. I went over to the service desk. I said, I'm going to take the time to say something about this. And I went up to the desk and I said, I'd like to see the manager. She looked at me like I was crazy. You absolutely cannot see the manager. I'd like to see the assistant manager. Uh, you would have thought I'd ask to see the president of the United States. Absolutely out of the question, not to be discussed. Why do you want to see them? And I don't think I look like a crazy, I'm not carrying a gun no, you or don't. anything. You look very you know? respectable. <laughs> why do you want to see them? And I said, I want to know why you're the last bank in New York that doesn't have one long line feeding into all the tellers. She looked at me, absolutely sincere, shocked, and said, well, that would never work. Well, of course it works. Everybody else has figured that out. The system you have now doesn't work. And she, I mean, she was just shaking her head at me that I could have come up with something that off the wall to even suggest such a stupid thing. So I went back and wrote, a, I thought it was a great letter, to which, of course, I have gotten no response to the man in charge of all of chemicals branches who handle this sort of thing. Well, your first mistake was to quietly go to management. What you want to do is rally the people around you while you're waiting in line. Voice your complaint in a polite way, loud enough that everyone can hear it, but not loud that you're shouting. Let me give you an example of how I did this. At my bank, Citibank, uh, they have, okay, you've seen how they have a priority teller and the regular people's tellers. Uh, this is a new thing at some banks. Well, what's extra new at, at my branch is normally the priority teller only accesses priority people. And the plain person's oh, teller only this. accesses Peasants. plain people. At my bank, both tellers access priority people, both of them. You have the priority window, and then you have the regular window, so that the regular people are always preceded by the priority people. Yes. Priority has its own teller, but also the regular teller is access by priority people. That means if you have $5,000 or more on deposit. I think, yeah, $3,000, yeah. I oh, believe. I can't believe there's been no bloodshed in that bank. You get bank. better so, service if you, your account has $5,000? Well, Citibank says in their public relations release on this subject that, that the people who are in the lines and have to use the electronic uh, system prefer that. And the people who are in the priority line, uh, we feel that that's uh, somewhat discriminatory, that the people who have a lot of money ought to be able to get as good a service as the people who don't. Do you know that to don't. be a fact, that there's a priority line <coughs> oh, yes, having yes. to do oh, with yes, the everybody. amount of money yes. in your account? Absolutely. Well, not only that, I don't, no, I don't feel like... I don't feel like it's so bad that there's a priority line. I mean, that, that's bad, but I've sort of gotten used to that. What I think is really bad is that my bank, also the regular people's line, 
the teller that services us is the priority people are as well prioritized to them. So they have two tellers prioritizing them. And, and we're cutting in front of you. In front of me. Well, I had been, I have to make deposits every day and as a fundraiser. And I waited and I would wait in line every day for half an hour because uh, the priority people kept coming in and getting in front of me. Well, so one day I'm standing in line and I said politely in a loud enough tone that people could hear me but not yelling, I said, gee, I see five tellers back here. I've been waiting a half an hour. Could you please open up another teller? At that point, the bank manager called me over into the corner of the room. Come here, I want to speak with you for a minute. The first thing he asked me is how much money my organization had in their account and how much I had in my personal account. And once given this information, he proceeded to tell me that if I complained to get in line, that he would be closing out not only my personal account, but our business account he as well. You yes. closing your account? Yes, he did. So uh, I, I that's how I ended up in People Inc. Is I saw an ad in the new, uh, uh, article from Mr. Estrick in the newspaper, and I said, okay, buddy, if I can't complain in line, then I'll complain. Do they have the right to close your account like that? I leafleted and they closed my account. I think that's oh, a good question. Yeah, I think oh, wait a minute. I'm, you I'm, leaflet? Yes. You put out I, a leaflet? Yes. Uh, after, after the uh, occasion that I just showed you in another situation that was uh, just as uh, absurd, in which they had actually cleared my funds and then put a stop on them after it had been cleared and then, and then told me just straightforward that that didn't happen. I, although I brought in the documentary evidence and they refused to even look at it. Which I, bank is that? This was Citibank. Citibank. And so I felt there was no choice but to go out and find other people that were having the same problems. And as soon as I put leaflets out on the street, they sent me a letter and said they would close the account. And the day the newspaper article that she referred to appeared, they did close my account. It's possible we'll Have all you complained to uh, a regulatory commission in the city or the state, the banking commission? Well, actually, there's a Senate bill, 591, <clears throat> which has been uh, introduced by Senator Christopher Dodd of Connecticut, which would require the banks, when they ho put a hold on your funds, to pay you interest if they receive interest. So, the problem that, that we've discovered in, in the investigation uh, that we've done following these, these absurd uh, practices that we've encountered is that uh, the banks, according to the Senate testimony that was preparatory to writing this piece of legislation, uh, make an excess of $977 million a day on the float that they receive for one day's float. In, in other the words, country? In, in the country. $977 million by stalling with your check? By and stalling, stalling with your, with your and of course. So what we're looking at is not that they just decided to be cranky with us customers. They are, have a they have certainly a purpose in mind in holding on to the checks, and this is the uh, this is the primary problem that we're that we're facing. Well, when you get to the window, or I better hold that for the next section. Uh, we're going to take a pause. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Cookie at our shrimp soup and salad bar. We give you so much shrimp. You've got to eat it to believe it. Okay. Cookies interrupts this commercial for an important announcement. Now save two sixty on Cookies sirloin steak dinner. Only nine ninety five for a fresh cut juicy sirloin. Our fabulous shrimp soup and salad bar and unlimited ice cream and dessert bar. Yes, only nine ninety five for a steak.